we have come to Tabernacle, this famous welcoming spot of biblical times, this great place from which all great things have flown and have come. When I was growing up in Tabernacle, we used to say way back then, when Susanna Lee was the head teacher at the school, if you live in Tabernacle, you are a lucky fellow. For there are mangoes and guineps and salsa, and we would itemize all the wonderful things that are available to us in Tabernacle, many of which are now very scarce. And so I want to say a special thank you, Old Front, to the people of Tabernacle who nurtured me and gave me support so that today I could come in a manner of speaking to give back for that love and good wishes. Reminiscing could take a long time, but I reminisce to way back in the good old days when teachers like Susanna Lee did more than teaching, did girls' guides, and teacher Vanter did more than teaching did the brownies and for a time fitted in with Boys Brigade. These were the people that helped develop the community and allow us to go beyond the academics to responsible membership in our community. So I want to say a special thank you to teacher Susanna Lee who is here. Let's give her a round of applause for her contribution and all the teachers back then including Dr. Patrick Welcome, who is here and who taught me way over there in the Methodist Primary School. Let's give them all a round of applause. It's a special delight to see all of you here, truly. Thank you again to all the other officials who are here. And for another good friend who should have been from Tabernacle, but regrettably may have been from Bass there or somewhere else in the country. He journeyed all the way from Canada and he's here with us. He's a Queen Council and former, former judge of the Eastern Caribbean Circuit. We want to recognize Mr. Anthony Ross, QC in our midst. Anthony, could you stand and, and, and let the people know who you are? Who knows who may need a good lawyer? <laughs> You give him a round of applause. So thank you all very much. I know for some of you it's your first time inside of Tabernacle. We are off the main and so many of you would pass us going further north in the easterly direction. So we say thank you and we hope that you will come again. Come again you must to see the end result of this beautiful beautifully grand edifice that is taking shape on these sacred grounds from which many in the past were restored to health and nurtured to protective, productive life and living. Come again, you must, not just to see the grand opening of this edifice, which Senator Phipps predicts will be ready in 14 months' time, but this edifice will be completed on time and it will be completed in accordance with the budget. I want you to come again to see the hundreds of people from Bellevue, Tabernacle, Mansions and Christchurch who will put this facility to good use. Tabernacle happens to be the home but this facility indeed is open to whoever may need of health care. So if you are from Jamaica and you get injury anywhere near here, Tabernacle Health Center will be where they will bring you. This facility, in my view, will be put to good use by all of the people in this country and in particular the zone which this facility should serve. By all the people, I mean our children at the daycare center right here in Tabernacle. Our children 
from our primary schools and we want to welcome those from the Edgar T. Morris Primary who are here. Give them a special hand of welcome. Those also from Mansion, Christchurch and Bellevue, all for whom this facility is intended to serve and to serve very well. This facility will not only serve the young children, immunize, immunizing them from diseases, attending to their cuts and bruises, their asthma and other ailments. This facility is also to serve our teachers, some of whom are here, the lawyers, the doctors, the politicians, the prime minister, the ministers, the police, the pregnant women, our elderly, our sportsmen and sportswomen, the poets, the unemployed and gainfully employed. This facility is for all the people from wherever they may come. The range of services to be offered here is very wide and the range includes antenatal clinics, child health, immunization, high-risk pregnancies, management of hypertension and diseases, HIV AIDS, mental health clinics, and environmental health services, some of which are now being done by our park and beaches, and of course, the step employees. I want especially to salute William Mercer and his team for doing a very good job in our health uh, environmental health care delivery. Let's give them a round of applause. I think some of the workers are here. We also, of course, want to commend those led by TK in this area. In the good old days when we talked about environmental health services, we remember and we call the good days of sanitary officers, one of whom used to live somewhere near here in this facility. Those were good times when we cared for our community, when we cut our fences and our hedges, when we waited for the dump truck to come to dispose of our garbage, and when all of us took pride. I remember the days of boy brigades, when we will cut the hedges of every home coming up on the main street in Tabernacle. And we do that as part of our giving back and our love and respect for cleanliness in our community. How we would wish that some of those old good days could become part of modern good days. For too long, the health care of the people and the peoples of the communities zone for care at this facility, in my view, was not being given the requisite attention. The facility that formerly rested here was allowed to run down by successive ministers of health, from Dr. Asim Martin to Marcella Leibard. About 2013, they finally closed the facility and they relocated it to the basement of the Tabernacle Daycare Center. When they did that, they appropriated the space intended for the development of the wonderful young children in their formative years. Two services were put in substandard living, delivery mode. Our delivery of the best primary health care and our delivery of the state-of-the-art decade services envisioned by champion leaders in this subsector like Mrs. Vanter Walters. As we speak to early child care, development, and education, I want to pay tribute to one of our early child care educators in Miss One. Up until this day, myself, Matron, Susanna Lee, I only know the lady as Miss Wan. <laughs> Susanna Lee, what was her correct name? <laughs> See? 
Melissa Isaac, do you know? Sif? <laughs> All of us knew her as Miss Swan. It was at her house, just above Pastor Gilfillan's residence, that so many of us were introduced to early childhood care and development. I want us to give a hand of applause for a pioneer in Miss Swan. Today, we come to signal a resurgence in confidence in our people. We come to signal what we in Team Unity stand for. People first and health above all. Because health is a blessing from God which we should never take for granted. Indeed, someone drew to my attention and not Pastor Magnella, but hopefully she will add a word when she comes later to Psalms 103. And they thought that that passage of scripture could be apt. I just want to read a few lines which have asked my colleague, Mr. Hamilton, who memorized the scripture from youth to record for me. So if there any error, the error is on his part. It starts, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his, all his benefits. You leave out a word, but that's okay. <laughs> forget not all his benefits. One of the benefits, really, is the benefit and blessing of good health. It goes on to say, who forget not his blessings, all his blessings, who forgives all your iniquities, you remember it there, and who redeems life from destruction, who heals all your diseases, all these then are blessings from the Lord. And indeed we have to put good health first. Because without good health, the fulfillment of all our potentialities cannot be easily realized. Without health, basically, you become limited. And so I want to encourage each of us to do something more for our health. For some of us, it may mean taking some more time to sleep. For some of us, it may mean eating and time for some of us it may mean using more fruits and less chocolates for some of us it may mean to incorporate some hours of fasting and purging of our bodies of the impunities and for that we don't need any 10 percent or three percent <laughs> as the pastor advised so I would want us to try that first. <laughs> I want to, in wrapping up, thank the people who will come to utilize this facility, the principal hub of activities and recipients of health care will come from Tabernacle, Bellevue, and Mansion. I thank them in advance. And I want, since I am here on sacred grounds, to thank the many persons from this community who over the years gave sterling contribution to the delivery of health care. We come adjacent to the home of Nurse Garnet, one of the first veterans in health care delivery in the good old days when deliveries were often had in the communities, having to come outside her gate to say, Nurse Garnet, my mother call you, which means it was about time. And we knew it was about time because largely when it was approaching, that right moment, my mother would clean the house, put up new curtains, just in case it happened 
and one would not be caught unprepared to receive the care. So I say thank you to Nurse Garnet, who is now somewhere in the state of Florida, but who listens and pays attention to all the developments here. I want equally to thank Nurse Sylvia Isaac, who is here with us. Could you stand, Sylvia? Because you have left us and you went to lustrous pastures in Frigate Bay. We want to thank you for coming here. And I remember too that one, the other occasion when I had to go to call Nurse Isaac, where she lived then in Bamboo Street. You remember? I got it right. Bamboo Street in Molyneux. And as the driver would have blown the heart, she looked out and she said, I'm ready. Already got the message. And she came and delivered one of my sisters who is here in Chippy. <laughs> so I want to say thank you on behalf of Chippy and to thank you for that contribution in midwife midwifery, which impacted so many people in the communities. But I myself had been able to experience that and your support in coming out even late at night to do those deliveries. This facility is a big one and a nice one. And I've heard people said many things about it. And one interesting thing that I heard this morning from Google was that somebody told him, it's not a health center Timothy is building in Tabernacle, it is a hospital. Well, I'm glad. I am glad from the pictures which you will see and the sign there, it really looks nice. And I want it to come out to be so very nice that I miss myself when I step inside would say, I am in this hospital here at Tabernacle. So thank you to the people because you deserve this. You deserve the best. You chose me so that I can deliver the best to you. So when this facility is ready, Baby Jay, you must come. Vera, you must come. All of you, the people, must come. And even my dear sister, Nurse Sister Ruby Lejean, who delivered health care very often from this facility, we welcome you to come and let's give Nurse Dreen a round of applause for her, her own contribution to the delivery of healthcare. I remember one time I came right here. Look at this. That is why we have to build with the future in mind because these facilities serve generations and two generations. It served me, it served my father, it served my mother. I recall going there to get an injection from Sister Jean, and it paid me very much. And when I told them to tell me, some nurses, their hands sting. <laughs> Nurse Joe, in delivering the injection, I felt the sting of that injection. But this is not all that we have been doing for the constituency and for the people. You heard from Senator Phipps how we delivered the Mary Charles Hospital with expanded services. And we are hoping that all the promised services will be delivered this year. The Honorable Gene Hamilton will tell you that he came here at Lower Stone Castle just below us to have the groundbreaking ceremony for some new houses. And we are grateful for that. I saw some already being painted. Some green, some blue. No orange, no yellow. We have to do something about the color scheme. But equally, we could say thank you. Because we delivered 19 homes already at Atlas Village. And a young man from Tabernacle, Marisha. I got it right? He 
was one of the beneficiaries. I have said to my constituencies, people, we serve all of the constituency. So when things are being done in tabernacle, it is not just for tabernacle people alone, because people in mansion voted too. So when homes are being delivered in Atlas, people from Tabernacle and Bellevue could form part of those who are benefiting. We are all one people and we are all one family. I want to point to the future because at Timber Lane, just next door there, above that church that you see in white, is the police station brand new? Well, not so brand new, but new enough. And right on that compound, we have started the construction of a modern forensic lab to serve the interests of national security. Because we are putting the safety of the people of this country first. Too many young lives are being squandered in gang fights and retribution and unnecessary drug and gang wars. And I want to appeal to the people of Tabernacle as I appeal to the people everywhere. It is time for us to turn the page and the homicides in the country. It is time for us to do better. It is time for us to respect life. Respect life. It is time for us to show more love to the parents who are harboring in their homes children with illegal guns. Put a stop to it. Put a stop to it. To those who are harboring in their homes the ganja, the marijuana, and whatever illegal products you have there, stop it before it is too late because often it's only when death comes we hear the crocodile tears of people claiming to be saddened by the very devilish conduct that they encourage through silence and without condemning children must be children and the Bible did say somewhere, Pastor, help me where I go wrong. Children must honor their father and their mother. And if you do so, your days may be long. And what years are they going now? Very young, in their teens. Some of this is because they have failed to honor a mother and a father who meant well for them. Let us declare our community and our country a zone of peace. In winding up, I want to say and to thank William Challenger. Willie is the son of a gentleman called Stanley Challenger. Vera, you know him very well. Stanley Challenger was a tractor driver and a reliable member of this community. Anything you need, sand, stones, fire, call Stanley Challenger, and he will be there. Today, this beautiful facility is being constructed by his son, who hails from Tabernacle, left us for greener pastures, and came back to us, and we thank him for returning. But we want to thank Willie. This project will cost us over two million dollars. Well, all of that nothing will really pocket, but this is a big job. This, in my view, will be the single largest contract that William has to date received. So let us give him a round of applause. <laughs> I could hear Stanley say no, because Stanley lived not too far from me. And he would say to Willie, as he would have said to Claire, well, we can't turn we back on Tim. 
no matter what people say. He would have said, Willie, I wish you well. Make this your best job. For this will showcase your quality and your ability to the rest of the world. And no one must be able to find fault with it or fault with you. Those words I commend to you, Willie, from your father and from me with love. So we want a quality product. When we get in there, we want no complaints. We want no leaks. Everything to be nice and in order. And we are counting on you. Very quickly, if it is one area of delivery by this administration, of which I am very pleased, it is the delivery in the health sector, in a short period of three years, we have brought health care to a higher level. We open up an oncology wing at the JNF Hospital. Well, this is a big word to say, that we opened up a department to care from those who are suffering from cancers. And cancer is now a big problem within Caribbean societies and for which we have to continue to do much. It never happened in 20 years before us. It has happened on the team unity. We have delivered the mental health, the treatment center. Didn't happen 20 years before us. It happened with us. And we are among some six countries in the Caribbean that managed to eliminate mother-to-child transmission of HIV AIDS. Cuba was the first. This designation came last year, I think December. Let's give those our healthcare providers a round of applause. I am equally proud too that MRI services are now available in St. Kitts. Yes, good. Before Team Unity, to get MRI services, one would have had to go to Antigua, Trinidad, or any other country, an island other than Nevis. We saw that as a particular challenge to the efficient delivery of healthcare. And through partnership, I heard Dr. Redman at the Prime Minister's Gala thank the officials in the Ministry of Health for partnering with him in the provision of MRI services at the St. Kitts Biomedical Research Facility right here in Borio. Put your hands together for a good development. I have managed to have sight of some statistics relating to the use of that facility for the year 2017, I am advised that 450 patients were catered to in 92 designated operational clinic days. Brain, lumbar, and cervical spine scans made up 71% of all clinical cases. This is remarkable. 450 persons save the burden of disrupting their normal routine here to go to Antigua, Trinidad, the USVI, to get MRI scans. And here are some of the areas that right here in small St. Kitts and Nevis, we are providing care. Brain, lumbar, and cervical spine scans right here in Little St. Kitts. Let's give our country and government a round of applause. In closing, I thank, say thank you again to the people who I love so much. My constituents first and foremost, but to all the people of St. Kitts and Nevis who showered favor on me and on team unity. I say thank you from the bottom 
of our, my heart and their hearts. We mean well, yet we have to reconcile that we are imperfect beings. At times, perhaps, we should listen more and talk less. And so I've put aside my paper so that I will talk less after now and listen to you more. I say thank you for that faith, for that trust, for that confidence. We are not miracle workers, but we will work hard for you. And we will deliver in accordance with the ability of the country to provide you services. This is just one. The forensic lab is just another. We put in some state-of-the-art light down at the playing field, and we are to modernize that. Many other good things are going to happen. I could promise you, your tomorrow will be better than your today. To God be the glory. I want to big up Ellen Mercer. Nice seeing you here. And I'm glad that you managed to get here. Because in speaking to her, she said, Tim, you know I can't move around. But I've heard the announcement about this thing. And I feel so good that this is happening in my community. I want to be there. I don't know if it is Frank who brought you or some other good Samaritan. Whoever brought you, tell them the Prime Minister say, thank you very much. We are happy to have you, as we are happy to have all of you. Thank you very much again. To God be the glory. May he bless us all. Stay up to date with news, programs, and activities of the government with SKNIS. Like us on Facebook. Listen to us on SoundCloud. Follow us on Twitter. And watch our videos on YouTube. Connect with us today. SKNIS, St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.